do 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 It's a computer. Hey guys, Brian here from Morgan Broadcasting bringing another video to you, this time on a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Nerdy computer things. I want to remind everybody that I stream every Monday, Friday, and Saturday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. So if you guys want to drop by, check me out, hang out in the chat, or even play some games with us, it'd be alright. As for my background, uh, I am an IT professional and I'm a PC enthusiast, so I really enjoy building PCs from the ground up, setting them up from scratch, configuring them, you know, kind of fine-tuning them and tailoring them for certain use cases. So this is a topic that I really enjoy providing content for. I also want to let everybody know that I'm going to be starting a new playlist on my, on my channel that is going to be more geared towards the streaming side of the house. So, you know, how to set your stuff up in OBS, how to create overlays, how to use Blender animation tools. Definitely come back and check us out. I also want to let you know that this video is not being paid for or sponsored by anybody, so this is stuff that I've purchased with my own money. Uh, there will be name drops later on in the video as I go through the components, but that's just because they're the components of the PC. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the review of this bad boy. So for a while I had pretty much just relinquished video games to my children. That is now their realm, that's something that they do, and I just pretty much started adulting. I mean, I have four kids, so what are you going to do? Um, but with the recent events in the world and the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I found myself with ample time on my hands to build a machine that could take the punishment that that game could put out. There is, there is, there's a caveat to what I'm about to say and I hesitate saying it because there's going to be a whole lot of trolls down in the comment section saying, you're not a real PC gamer bro, but I, I have to tell you guys, just so you know, um, this is actually a pre-built computer. What? Now before you start trashing me, Hear out my logic. I did apply some logic, not a lot of logic, but there's some logic. With this pandemic, uh, the prices and availability of computer components has skyrocketed and become limited to many, myself included. So I found myself doing what everybody does when they start uh, building a PC is they head over to PC Part Picker or whatever building software you use or whatever kind of comparison websites you use. And I started specking out this PC based on the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 specifications. Um, once I got done specking it out and getting it exactly where I wanted it to be, then I started looking at some pre-builts. Uh, and uh, I found one. I found a pre-built that had pretty much the exact specs that I was going to put into the machine. Um, it had all the stuff minus a few things like the case was different, the fans are a little different, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, and I found that it was only a hundred dollars more to go the pre-built route. Now I know a lot of you are going to say, but that's more. A hundred dollars is more than you would have saved. And that's correct, but there's a, there's a couple of things that you got to think about uh, when you're getting a pre-built versus uh, building it yourself. So the first thing that you're going to get is you're going to get a warranty. So I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Brian, all of these parts, they come with a warranty already on them. And that's very true. Um, but here's the thing. You have a warranty on the CPU, might not be as long as the warranty on the GPU. I think I have that backwards. Um, you know, the warranty on, you know, the motherboard isn't gonna have the same as the warranty on this fan because they have different life expectancies. So with this, instead of having onesies and twosies, this entire thing is warranted. So let's say that, uh, you know, as long as you haven't physically altered anything, um, you call up Zydax, which is who I bought the machine from, you call up Zydax and they're gonna say, okay, what happened to it? You give them an explanation. Uh, sometimes they might ask you for a log file to see your system configurations to make sure you didn't break it you know, on purpose. Uh, and then they're gonna say, sweet, send it on out to us and we'll send you a new one. So you're gonna be out this component anyway. You might as well get it from somebody who has it in stock and is readily available to ship it to you. To me, that's worth it. Another thing you're gonna get is the trade-up program. So a lot of these pre-built companies offer a trade-up program. So say the new NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs come out and you wanna get that sweet, sweet NVENC in there so you can stream to your heart's content. Well, all you gotta do is give them a call and say, hey, I want that new 3000 series. And they say, cool, hey, send us your old card. And you say, hey, sweet, only pay us the difference and you're good to go. To me, that might be a little bit worth it, especially if you're trying to stay on the cutting edge of technology. 
Now don't worry, we're gonna be doing plenty of builds on this channel and I'm gonna show you every process and everything that you need to do to get the computer built. However, in this video, I just kinda of want you to take a second look at pre-built computers. They're not as bad as they used to be and they offer a whole lot more customization nowadays. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the review. Let's start off with the motherboard. It is the MSI B450 Gaming Pro Carbon Max Wi-Fi. That's a mouthful. It has four DIMM slots with dual channel memory up to 4133 megahertz. The max memory of the board is 128 gigabytes and it supports both ECC and non-ECC memory. It has 7.1 channel audio with optical support. This board supports PCIe Gen 3. It comes with two PCIe by 16 slots. Only one is Gen 3, the top one. It has three PCIe by one slots. It has six SATA 3 connections. It comes with two M.2 connections. It has one USB-C connection, a total of three USB 3.2 connections and two USB 2.0 connections. If you're using an integrated graphics APU, this has onboard graphics support for both HDMI and DisplayPort. This board comes in the ATX form factor. For connectivity, it has an Intel Gigabit LAN, Wi-Fi 802.11 standard of A, B, G, N, A, C. It is also Bluetooth enabled, and this uses MSI's Mystic Lite for its RGB control. We're gonna go through these next components a lot quicker. We got the AMD Risen 7 because I couldn't afford to get the 9 at the time. Wish I would have got the 9 based on the fact that I stream now, but hey, what are you going to do? You can't live in the past. I used the G-Skill because it was pretty cheap. It's got really good performance and it's really pretty with all of the RGB. In fact, these are the only two things with RGB in my entire machine. The power supply is a 750 watt, not much to say, fully modular. Um, I would have gone with a thousand had I known I was going to start streaming and adding peripherals, but hey, again, can't live in the past. So I picked up the 2080 Super instead of the 2080 Ti because I didn't feel like buying two 2080 Supers that were going to do a pretty sufficient job for what I needed it to. The M.2 storage is definitely a requirement if you're gonna run Windows 10 of any kind on any machine, you're gonna get much faster reads than you are going to get from a 7200 spinning drive. But of course I did get a 7200 spinning drive and this is mainly where I keep all of my overlay files, all my YouTube uh, footage and stuff that I wanna keep for later that I don't use regularly. It came with an AIO that had a Zydax sticker on it. I am not sure the brand, but it looks an awful lot like a Cooler Master, so I'm gonna say it's a Cooler Master. And of course, the Fantex case. This case is awesome, it is heavy, it is very, very good quality, and I recommend it to anybody. It comes with five 140 millimeter fans, top notch. So while this machine is terrific at gaming and you get the high frame rates at the AAA titles and you get no system lag whatsoever, there are some things that I have noticed while I was streaming and they are things that you definitely want to watch out for, especially before forking out this kind of cache for a system. The first issue I noticed when streaming with this machine is that the NVENC encoder has a hard time keeping up when it's under heavy load by the game during the stream. I stream at 60 frames per second on Twitch and I'm able to play the games without any issue at a high frame rate. However, once I start adding in overlay items, cameras, transitions, background music, GIFs, you name it, the GPU would constantly slow my stream down to 30 and even sometimes 20 frames per second. After noticing this, I started utilizing the extra cores of my CPU to take over with H.264 encoding, and the world has been fine ever since. If you want your stream to look great, be aware that even the mighty 2080 Super is going to have issues, especially if you're playing AAA titles that aren't overly optimized. Modern Warfare. Heat. It's a real PC performance killer. And while this rig is one badass thing that can put out the frames, it acts more like a space heater when you're in an enclosed space. I stream in an office that has the doors closed and I gotta tell you, you're gonna have to have a fan to keep it off of you. So I will say that the, uh, the GPU does run pretty hot in here. I have a mild overclock on this. So in the overclock, uh, while it's under heavy load, it's around 80 degrees Celsius, uh, but normally it's around the 76 to 78 degrees Celsius mark. That being said, the PC is really good at keeping the GPU and the CPU cool, just not your body. 
Now, while the motherboard in this machine is terrific for gaming, it does a great job. Yeah, it's not the X570 chipset. No, it doesn't have the speeds that other motherboards has, but it definitely will take care of business when it's game time. Um, I will say, this is one of the downfalls of this machine, especially if you're gonna use it for streaming. For a regular gamer, this motherboard is totally sufficient. It has the appropriate amount of ports. So you, can, you can plug in your gaming keyboard, your gaming mouse, maybe a camera. But once you start streaming, you start adding in uh, the other peripherals. You know, you have your USB controllers, you have your um, cameras set up. You have a whole bunch of other peripherals you start setting up into this, you're gonna run out of ports really quick. So it's something you should keep in mind or plan on expanding with a PCIe card to expand your, your 3.2 ports. So when it comes to productivity, uh, this machine is more than sufficient for taking care of uh, all your animations, all your video editing. So this is really a triple threat computer. It's a gaming computer, streaming computer, and a content creation computer. Uh, with the extra cores in the CPU and the extra fast memory, you're gonna be well taken care of in this department. So besides some of the prior downfalls of this PC, this thing is great at getting you into streaming. So if you wanna get a machine that's gonna be really good at gaming, really good to start you off in a stream, it's gonna be great. Are there other PCs out there that are gonna dominate when it comes to gaming and streaming at the same time? Absolutely, but I made the decision early on that my kids should also eat food and not just stare at my computer. So um, that's kind of the route that I went and I will definitely be upgrading with a second PC to take the load off of this in the future. We are gonna feature some other future builds coming up. Like I've mentioned before in this video, we're gonna be doing a dedicated streaming PC for this. Uh, also in the back, you can't see it's behind uh, this computer. Uh, we built uh, the kids gaming PC. So that's more of a little bit more of a budget aligned PC that I'm definitely gonna share with you what we did, how we built it, what the components and specs of that machine are as well. Um, so that'll be coming up in the future. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like and subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I have new content coming down the pipe. Until I see you guys next time, game on.